don't come to Canada in 2024 if you cannot come correct. Period. Drops mic. <laughs> Hey everyone welcome to the channel in today's video i'm going to be telling you why canada is not for you in 2024 as you know on this channel we're all about solutions right so i'm also going to tell you the reasons why canada potentially might not be for you in 2024 and what you can do to change that so those who don't know me hey welcome to my channel my name is hamida and i am a nigerian youtuber based in Toronto, canada i film about lifestyle in canada Occasionally, some vlogs and some career content. Without further ado, let's get right into the reason why we are here today. But before that, if you are new here, please consider subscribing to this channel. I promise you, you won't regret it. To my existing subscribers, thank you for always coming back to watch my videos. Do not forget to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Anyways, let's get started. <laughs> Disclaimer. This video is not to discourage you from coming to Canada. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I mean, it's literally just to open your eyes to the reality of what Canada is right now. So first of all, Canada is not a get-rich-quick country. Unfortunately, that is the sad reality. People are thriving, yes. Businesses are thriving, yes. But the reality on the grand scheme of things is that the system is not designed for you to be stinkingly rich. And of course, you're familiar with taxes and all of that. You pay taxes on your return on investment. You're obviously going to pay taxes on your income bracket. I mean, depending on your income bracket, the more you earn, the more your taxes and all of that. Not so fun stuff, right? But essentially, some of it is made up with like basic amenities and, you know, a relatively safe environment. I say relatively safe environment because, you know, that depends on your location. And generally, due to the high cost of living, crime rates are also very high. I mean, recently the Ontario police, which is crazy, the Ontario police put out communication that people should just like essentially put their car keys, you know, at their front porch to avoid invasion because apparently there's a lot of home invasion and most times they only break in to steal your car and you might get hurt in the process. So imagine the police telling you to just like serve your car key on the platter in front of your porch to you know prevent them from getting into your house and hurting you so yeah it might be safe compared to other countries but like these days it is not so safe so like i was saying if you want to get rich quick <laughs> canada is not for you so yeah don't come you'll be frustrated however if you want a relatively safe community and you know somewhere that you can have a decent life you know if you're lucky enough to earn just as much to afford the basic things and of course, a good work culture, life balance, then of course you can come. Now, moving on. Canada is not for you in 2024 if you cannot come correct. I'm saying it again. I'm going to tell you what I mean by that and also the solution. First of all, you come to Canada if you have not done your research about the in demand jobs. I mean, that's provided that you want to do it 9 to 5. Same applies also for entrepreneurs. Research is king like it is king it cannot be stated enough you know right now in your home country your profession might be in demand right but you need to find out if it's the same in canada right now the minimum wage is not realistically especially in ontario is not enough to sustain a single person not to talk of like you know a family so you need to position yourself in a way that you will stand out in the job market so if you're in a profession that requires certifications or licensing you're going to want to have a plan to get the license unless of course you want to do a 360 switch you know to your career and do an in-demand job in which case you need to start taking your training from your home country just so that you know you can get integrated into the system quickly but if you intend to practice i'm talking about the doctors the lawyers the nurses and you know careers that require certifications and licensing if you want to practice here and you're not ready to do the exams, then don't bother coming because you'll be frustrated. Like I said, minimum wage jobs are not cutting it. So those exams are also not cheap. I remember what I said. Hmm. Survival jobs is not the way out for you if you truly want to live your best life, right? 
So you are moving into a brand new country. The least you can do is equip yourself with info, research, enough data to be able to guide you, you know, in your new journey. For example, figuring out where to settle and all of that fun stuff. Also, in the spirit of coming correct, you know, you want to find out the basic things that will make your life easy when you settle down. For example, having a driver's license. It might look little, but this is a big deal, right? Having a driver's license from your home country. I mean, when I came in 2022, having a driver's license was hardly a requirement for, for my role. For contacts, I'm a data analyst. But recently, when I checked the job postings, I see that they write that you need to have a valid driver's license, right? And people that landed recently also said the same thing in their different fields. So in your home country, if you never had any experience of driving, i.e., if you're part of those people that believe that because <laughs> you don't have a car, you don't need a license, my advice to you now would be to start learning how to drive. Ultimately, getting a license. So as to reduce your wait time in getting a license here by at least eight months to a year. In Ontario, what happens when you come with an international license is that you would be able to take your G2 test immediately after you pass your knowledge test. Otherwise, you would have to wait for eight months to a year to be able to take the drive test because you have to go back to driving school, which is also not cheap, right? But like if you had gotten your license from your home country, you just need to take a few classes here and there to brush up and then you can do your drive test as soon as you want. Now, not having a license, a driver's license in Korea that involves going to a client site, i.e. construction, project management, admin all of that stuff it's a no-brainer like having a license is a must they will ask you again during your interview as well as put it in the job postings and if you don't have it they will move forward with someone else also i mean this might be a bit controversial but if you're currently like dealing with depression or like anxiety panic attacks all of that stuff i would say that you should have it sorted out in your home country like see a therapist and all of that before you come to Canada because it can get heightened. Even people that come here with like perfectly good mental state still sometimes find themselves like slipping into depression because obviously there's the cold weather, you know, there's the not seeing your family and friends, you know, there's, you know, sometimes the social life can take a downturn, the process of a job search, navigating a new job, you know, sometimes even being apart from your partner. Once again, the cold you know, gets a worthy mention. Winter blues and all of that stuff is no joke. So if you feel like your mental state is very fragile right now, and to be fair, in as much as we have like support in Canada and all of that stuff, I advise you to sort of like get stabilized and find a way to manage those emotions, right? And figure out what works for you before you take that huge step of relocation. This applies to other countries as well. Because relocation in itself is huge. And it's going to take a toll on your perfectly okay mental health. So yeah, <laughs> something to think about. Now, don't come to Canada if you have serious medical problems. The healthcare system right now is crazy. Like the wait time to get a doctor is insane. Even when I came, and then it wasn't even this bad. The wait time was like six months. Even with that, I got lucky, right? Even with that. But one thing is for sure, if you're coming in as a PR, You'll be able to get access to urgent care clinics and ERs for free. And God forbid, if it's really bad, you can call 911. You pay for 911 service and then you'll be attended to, you know, immediately. But if it's not severe, i.e., a case of life and death, you're going to be in ER for hours. Of course, it makes sense to have a family doctor to help manage whatever it is that you have. The reality is that there is a shortage of doctors and healthcare practitioners in Nigeria, in Canada, sorry. And it's especially bad in major cities. So you really should take care of yourself and also like compare the cost of, you know, doing major surgeries. For example, IVF here is ridiculously high compared to doing it in Nigeria. I mean, those sort of procedures aren't also free here, despite the healthcare being free. They are very expensive. So do your findings. So in the bit to be solution oriented, I am going to start a new series on IG called seizing every opportunity, meaning we're not leaving any money on the table. So make sure you follow me on there. I'm also going to give tips on how to navigate the country as a new immigrant from like personal experiences, you know, for example, interview feedbacks that I've gotten just so that you can learn a thing or two. I really just need to like pay forward 
right? So like both newcomers and OGs will certainly learn something, I promise. So watch out for those videos after this one. On a final note, in as much as Canada is still the preferred destination for most in terms of relocation, I honestly just wanted to share my thoughts on the current situation of things. And this is not to scare anybody at all. So feel free to do your own research and decide what is good for you. I wish you all the very best in your endeavors. Let me know what you think in the comment section, okay? I'll be in the comments. And then I'll see you in my next video. Bye!